we can we can give payment a chance to go a little bit over time as well. <laughs> I don't think I will go over time. Okay, okay. Maybe I'll go under time. <laughs> no problem. No, nobody ever complains about that. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so Peyman, it's very nice to have you here. It's a great pleasure to introduce our second and final speaker for today, Peyman Islami from the University of Longtol Vergata. We'll talk about mixing rates for symplectic, almost an oz of maps. Thank you, Thank you very much. Uh, thanks to ICTP and the uh, organizers for organizing such a nice event and uh, especially for making it available for uh, basically everyone with an uh, internet connection. And uh, uh, yeah, and uh, they, they can at some point contribute to the mathematics as well, even if they don't have an affiliation or, or something like that. Okay, uh, so I will be talking about uh, mixing rates for symplectic almost of maps. Uh, and uh, so I chose this topic because I wanted to give uh, a concrete class of examples where you can see some of the tools and some of the ideas that were explained in the last couple of weeks in the courses of uh, Yuri Lima and Jose Alves. And uh, what I will be talking about has components from both of the courses, but mostly from the one on young uh, structures. And I will try to use that terminology uh, as well. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'll have to. Yeah. So uh, the plan is to talk about, uh, or oh, well, tell you what are these uh, almost Anasov diffeomorphisms in general. And then I will introduce to you the specific class of examples that I will consider. Uh, the main result, which will be, as the title uh, suggests, the mixing rates for these systems. And then I will go to explain some of the main ingredients of the proof. Uh, and there will be some pictures. And as we go on, the pictures become more uh, sophisticated. So I hope the audience appreciates that. Uh, so uh, I took the definition of an almost honest of diffeomorphism from a paper of Hu in two, uh, Hui Hu from 2000. Uh, let M be a C infinity two dimensional compact Riemannian manifold without boundary and uh, Leb to denote the Riemannian measure on M. Uh, F is a C2 uh, diffeomorphism on M, and such a diffeomorphism is called almost Anasov if there exists two continuous uh, families of uh, cones, uh, unstable and stable, such that except for a finite set, and this is probably the most important part of the definition, you have the invariance of the cone, the usual invariance of the cones. Uh, and uh, the differential uh, expands the vectors in the unstable cone and contracts the vectors in the stable cone. And for most of the presentation, uh, this presentation, uh, S, this finite set will consist of a single fixed point, uh, fixed point of F. Okay, so, so this is uh, the general definition of uh, uh, almost as uh, of uh, diffeomorphism given by Hui Hu in his paper in 2000. Uh, now, let me briefly mention me, some could, of could the... ask Could I ask a question, please? Yes, please. W when you say subset, do you mean uh, 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 possibly equal, or is the closure inside the interior, or just a subset? Yeah, it's just a finite subset this is how yeah, it's subset. yeah okay. so this is a copy paste of the definition of okay. course uh, i will uh, consider specific examples and in all of the specific examples there are additional uh, constraints and you will see that they will be part of this they will meet the definition okay i don't okay. prove anything for the general uh, almost analysis of diffeomorphism okay thank you you're welcome Okay, so uh, the works, uh, so I've mentioned some of the works that I know of uh, in case um, uh, I miss something, I would be happy to, to know more. Uh, 
so in 1995, Hu and uh, Yang, they introduced a class of uh, almost a class of uh, diffeomorphisms, and they proved uh, their goal was to prove that uh, these uh, examples don't admit a finite SRB uh, measure. Uh, and in their examples, the, the non-uniformness was only in the unstable uh, direction. Uh, so this is the first instance where I saw the, the word almost Anasov. In 2000, where uh, the, the definition is taken from, uh, we who proved the existence of finite or in infinite SRB measures, and both can happen. And in those examples, there are some additional non-degeneracy conditions. Uh, and the derivative, the differential at the fixed point is the identity. And uh, Zhang and Hu in 2019, they proved also a polynomial upper bound and a lower bound for the same class of examples in the finite measure preserving case. And if I'm correct, the upper and lower bounds, they're not, uh, they don't have the same uh, 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 exponent. Uh, so uh, it's not uh, sharp in, in that sense. Um, then later, uh, Bruin and Terhezio proved uh, more precise mixing rates for the same examples uh, of, of Hui Hu in finite and infinite measure case. And also for flows, uh, limit laws were obtained uh, by Bruin, uh, Terhezio, and Todd, I think, and also uh, Hank Bruin himself. Another example that I'm aware of is the example of the Catalk map. And uh, in a, a preprint, I don't know if this is published or not, Pessin, Senti, and Shady proved polynomial upper and lower bounds for uh, these maps. Uh, and moreover, they show that any smooth, compact, connected, oriented surface admits an area preserving uh, C1 plus uh, diffeomorphism with non zero Lee Apolov exponents which is Bernoulli and also has polynomial decay of correlations, lower and uh, upper bounds. And uh, uh, these last two uh, papers or results, uh, they have something in common, which is that they take advantage of the possibility of viewing the map near the uh, bad fixed point as a time one map of a flow and the Hamiltonian flow in the, uh, in the latter case. Um, you will see the importance of, I mean, I will comment on the importance of this maybe later on when I uh, consider specific examples. And uh, I've, uh, there's another example, a uh, class of examples by Liverani and Martes, and I kind of separated that from the other ones for two reasons. <laughs> the main reason is that these are exactly the examples that I will consider in this talk. And another one is that uh, for example, uh, this um, uh, way, uh, it doesn't have, in, in these examples, you, you cannot really view the map as a time one map of a flow. Uh, I mean, at least that, that's not clear. And uh, also the derivative near the, uh, the derivative at the fixed point is not the identity. Uh, so I'll mention the, uh, specific examples. These are the examples from Liverani and Martins. Uh, and I will comment a little bit about that before mentioning the main results and uh, then, then ingredients of the proof. So, uh, question? yes, yes, question. Can you please uh, go back to the slide where you showed the results by Boon and Tahesio and uh, by Hui Hu? Yes, this is Bruin Terhezio, this is Hui Hu. Uh -huh. So in your definition of the almost Anasov system, you only assume there's something about an indifferent set, finite set. But uh, if, if I'm not wrong, if I understood correctly what I read, this requires some um, non-degenerate form, which has to do with being topologically conjugated to something with a Markov partition. I think at least in who, whose work uses this fact, right? Yeah, people use, I will actually use a Markov partition as well. So, so, so my question is, um, the, because it's not mentioned here, can you show polynomial rates also without assuming it? Without assuming the contribution to, to just in the general setup? No, 
I'm not proving anything in the general setup. I'm just proving something for a class of systems. And I, think, I will, I think uh, that, yeah, in a few slides, you will see a specific mark of partition for this specific so, class so, of maps. Okay, so our setup is where we do have a mark of partition. Okay, thank yes, you. exactly, exactly. But thank you. Uh, so yeah, since you asked the question, I have to uh, 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 spoil the surprise, but uh, I guess most people already guess because I mentioned that this is related to the to young structures. I will con uh, construct a young structure for the class of maps. That's that's important. And of course, uh, if you know a finite mark of partition for your system to begin with, the task is much easier to construct the young structure. Uh, but it's not necessary that you have a, a mark of partition. It's possible that you might be able to do it without, but the technicalities will be more uh, involved. I think maybe I understand um, Sneil's question and Payman's comment is that these results all have some additional technical assumptions, right? They're not all results just just using the definition that you gave previously. This is yeah, yeah. As you see, there is when I mentioned who I, I mentioned non degeneracy conditions, and yeah. I didn't mention what these are. Uh, and yeah, as uh, Sneer uh, mentioned, uh, who also assumes, I think, existence of, of Markov partition. And as he mentioned, uh, it is generally believed that these are topologically conjugate to uh, uh, on the torus to, to the linear uh, uh, map, but uh, there's, no, uh, there's no such result in the literature. So uh, either you assume it uh, or you Prove the, or you construct some young tower without assuming a Markov partition, or you construct it by hand. And in our case, we construct by hand. And uh, I will show in a few slides a picture of the Markov partition. Thank you. Okay. So, so uh, before showing you the actual Markov partition, here are the, the specific examples. Of Liver, that Liverani and Martens uh, studied. The map T is the almost annus of uh, diffeomorphism. Uh, it's given by this uh, formula, Txy maps to x plus hx plus y, where hx is some function on the, uh, uh, some map of the circle. I denote the circle by T1. That's the notation here. And in the second component is hx plus y. The assumptions on H are that uh, H maps zero to uh, zero. Uh, so in, uh, the point zero, zero is also a fixed point for T. Uh, H prime of zero is zero. This is uh, responsible for uh, uh, the origin being a neutral fixed point. Uh, H prime of X is uh, positive. Uh, this is responsible for the hyperbolicity away from uh, the origin and or, or you say non-uniform hyperbolicity and a two and three imply in particular that zero is a minimum of h double prime so uh, h uh, sorry h prime so h double prime at zero is also zero and h triple prime around zero is uh, non-negative in addition to that we assume that h triple prime of zero is strictly positive and we make some symmetry, uh, symmetry assumption that h of minus x is minus h of x. And uh, these conditions overall mean that you can write uh, hx, uh, h is a C infinity function or, or uh, yeah, uh, sufficiently smooth. You can write hx uh, as a bx cubed plus some terms of order uh, five, where b is a positive uh, real number. Okay. By the way, this uh, symmetry uh, assumption on H also um, uh, induces some symmetry in, in T, but uh, um, yeah, I haven't written it down, but uh, it, you will see uh, in the pictures, if you see some symmetry, it is because uh, of this assumption. So uh, uh, no, uh, just a point about motivation of Liverani and Martens, they, they wanted to study the simplest class of uh, two-dimensional uh, uh, systems that uh, retain some, as they write, some Hamiltonian behavior and exhibit anomalous uh, uh, behavior. And this is 
uh, due, usually due to some weak hyperbolicity. And in the specific examples I mentioned, in uh, contrast to the, the other examples from the papers I mentioned, the dynamics at the fixed point is, uh, so the linearization is a, is a shear. Uh, and uh, it's, uh, this is the generic behavior near a neutral fixed point for a 2D uh, symplectic map, simply because symplecticity means that the determinant is one. So if you have an eigenvalue equal to one, the trace is two, and such a matrix in general or generically is a shear, not the, not the identity. Uh, so they, they were motivated by physical examples, uh, Liverani and Martins. And this is the simplest uh, picture showing the stable and unstable manifolds of the uh, fixed point, uh, which I, throughout the, the rest of the talk, I denote by bold uh, zero. So this is just the origin. For me, red, uh, well, blue is always uh, stable. And uh, in the pictures, uh, blue curves are decreasing as well. And uh, red is the unstable. Uh, so this is the, the, the picture of the stable and unstable manifolds at, at the origin. Uh, Liverani and Martens in 2005, they obtained uh, quite a number of estimates for these maps, uh, quantitative estimates on hyperbolicity, some of which I've listed here, that the stable and unstable distributions are C1, uh, except at zero. Stable and unstable manifolds are at least C2, that's all they need for their estimates at zero. Uh, and uh, invariant cones, so you, ha you have such invariant cones, so the uh, there are k plus, k minus uh, uh, positive, such that the unstable direction, if you denote it by one u, and note that these, these uh, unstable uh, directions, they're always, the unstable curves are always increasing. Uh, at the point x, y, they satisfy this property. Moreover, the derivative in, in uh, all directions is bounded by this, uh, the reciprocal of uh, this uh, theta, which is related to the angle between the stable and unstable uh, uh, directions. And uh, also they, they have uh, estimates on the regularity of the holonomy away from zero. And we will use these, uh, these results uh, from, from the paper of Liverani and Martin. Oh, by the way, uh, this work uh, that, uh, well, the main theorem I will present and, and the work is joint work with Carlangelo Liverani. Uh, and in that paper, they also obtained decay of correlations, but uh, decay of correlations with the rate n minus two uh, times log n to the fourth. And uh, they use this zero noise limit uh, method, which means that uh, you introduce some randomness into the system, which makes uh, the correlations decay exponentially fast. But as you let the, uh, the randomness go to zero, uh, the rate, uh, of course, uh, uh, becomes worse. And if you're able to control it to, uh, up to the limit, you will get a uh, decay of correlations uh, for, for the limit. And this is what they obtain, n to the minus two log n to the fourth. And uh, a bit earlier, uh, these people, uh, Artuzo and Prampolini in 1998, they did some numerical ex experiments on maps which fit into uh, the class of uh, maps that Liverani and Martens studied. And they, uh, they uh, obtained uh, the numerical estimates suggested some faster decay rate, like n to the minus 2.5. And uh, so this at least makes one curious to see whether this is the true rate uh, or not. Uh, not because really the true rate is important or not, but because uh, to understand if the methods used to obtain such a rate are uh, efficient or, or not because the same method of zero noise limit was also originally used for the LSV maps uh, the, to, to uh, prove uh, rates of mixing for the uh, LSV map. And there uh, they obtained uh, uh, the right uh, rate for decay of correlations. So uh, as you can guess, if the rate was <laughs> correct, I wouldn't be talking about this. So. <laughs> 
the sharp rate is actually n to the minus uh, three. And that is the main result of this, uh, this talk. And uh, since I already told you that the, the proof of this uh, theorem uses young structures, it also shows the efficiency of, of young structures uh, as opposed to other methods uh, like this zero noise limit uh, method. Uh, of course, it leaves the possibility that maybe uh, that zero noise limit uh, method was not uh, done uh, in the proper way, but uh, I don't know much about that. Uh, so I cannot comment on it. But here, uh, so there, uh, we have this theorem uh, that says that for every uh, eta between zero one, uh, there exists constant C1, C2, such that for any two uh, observables, holder observables on the torus, uh, whose integral is normalized to be one. And for the lower bound, uh, they are uh, bounded away from the origin. The following estimate holds the correlations, which have been defined, uh, I think, uh, yesterday, uh, but they're also defined here in the footnote. They uh, are lower bounded by C1 times n to the minus three times the norms of the observables and upper bounded by uh, different constant C2, but uh, same rate n to the minus three uh, times the norm of the observables. And uh, if one of the observables has integral uh, zero, then uh, there's a possibility uh, uh, to get a better rate. Uh, so up to uh, n to the minus fourth. Um, okay. So if there are no questions, then I will go into the ingredients of the, the proof. Okay. Uh, so these are the ingredients of the proof. So the main ingredients are basically a young structure. Uh, it's not necessary, but we use an initial Markov partition to make the task easier of constructing the, the young uh, structure. Uh, this is, uh, so the second point is uh, first return map plus further inducing. This means that we obtain the young structure in two steps. First, we take the first return map to some subset away from the neutral uh, fixed point, and then we further induce it to something that satisfies all the properties of, the, of a young structure. And uh, the second point is that in this, um, uh, uh, in this work, you, you have to estimate precisely the tail of the return times. This is by far the most uh, difficult part of the problem. Uh, so most of the paper, uh, most of the proof of this uh, theorem uh, boils down to just estimating the tail of the return times. And that's where all the geometry comes in. And that's why the Markov partitions simplify the task. In addition to Markov partitions, there are two, uh, th there's one other component that we use and that's uh, what's called the quasi Hamiltonian. Uh, if you remember early on, I mentioned about two of the other papers that they use the fact that the map near the fixed point is the time one map of a flow or Hamiltonian flow. We don't have that here. So, but what takes the 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 replace the position of that is a quasi Hamiltonian, uh, which uh, co allows us to control the shape of the trajectories when you get near the, the the fixed point. And another component is the dynamics on the stable manifold. So, if you have a point on the stable manifold of of the origin, it goes uh, towards the origin, but it of course slows down. And, uh, but you can, you can control this rate, uh, rate of approach to the fixed point. So these are the main ingredients. If you were to do this in general, uh, maybe you could do it without this one, but the other, uh, the other uh, ingredients are, are quite useful and, and you, can, uh, you can deploy that, them in, in general situations. Uh, Okay, so here's the Markov partition. Uh, 
So why is this a Markov partition? Well, uh, if you stare enough at it, you will see that it's a Markov partition. Uh, the way you construct it is you uh, take the stable and unstable manifolds, you continue them until they close back on, on each other. And uh, you can argue using the symmetry that, that exists in the map that uh, uh, y y these um, curves, they close, they really close on each other and you can come up with this shape. And now you can uh, do a little game and see that the pieces that stick out of the fundamental domain of the torus, you can translate them uh, by Z2 to put them back inside the square. Uh, so for example, uh, maybe I do one or two. Uh, this one uh, you can translate back into here. Maybe uh, this one goes there. Uh, uh, this one uh, goes uh, here. Did I make a mistake? Uh, I'm a, where does this one go? It goes to the top right hand corner. Top. Oh, sorry, this one, no, this one goes there, right? Yes. Yeah, okay, and now this one goes there. Yes. Okay, yeah, so, okay. So it's Excuse a Markov me, partition me. using three elements, right? So, so in which sense you are saying it's a Markov partition, so what is the main property of this the, rectangle? So the stable manifolds in, in forward time, they go into stable, the stable sides. So the stable are blue and the unstable are, are red. Everything is, is uh, constructed from stable and unstable manifolds of zero. And they fill out the whole uh, domain. Uh, and so the, in, in backward time, the unstable uh, also goes inside the unstable. Uh, so it satisfies the Markov uh, property. Uh, so uh, if I understand, uh, excuse me, I'm sorry. If I understand this, uh, this figure, it looks like the stable and unstable manifolds are, are intersecting non-transversely at this uh, at the singular point. Is that correct? Exactly, exactly. That's what makes this uh, class of examples different from uh, the other papers that I mentioned. In all of the other papers, the, uh, the distributions are transversal everywhere uniformly. Mm -hmm. Here, uh, they become tangent. and uh, this makes the geometry a bit more difficult and hence it makes it more difficult to estimate the tail of the return times. Uh, and uh, yeah. besides that, you need, you need upper and lower bounds for the tail of the return times. So and you need to estimate things uh, precisely. Mm -hmm. is, this, uh, is, is this fixed point still, uh, still neutral or is, or, is, or is the differential now have a shear effect because of the transversality of the- uh, so The of derivative of the fixed point is, is, uh, is, uh, is one, yeah, it's one. Zero, okay, so it is right? neutral, I see. Okay. It, okay. Or an indifferent, oh, it's not neutral. Oh, I see, okay. Oh, it is a new, uh, I don't know what you call neutral. Well, well, not, not, I shouldn't say neutral. The but, eigenvalues but, are, are one. The eigenvalues are one, but it's not the identity is what I was trying to say. Yeah, it's not the identity. I see, I see. Okay, there you go. Um, so here's uh, uh, a little bit more about the inducing uh, step. Uh, so we want to obtain a young structure and uh, we obtain this in two steps. Now, this is maybe a very simple idea, but I think it's, it's uh, underestimated. And uh, this idea of obtaining a young structure in, in two steps or in, in multi steps, I think goes back to Roberto Markarian uh, in the, uh, where he used it to prove the KF correlation for billiards. And uh, th this is maybe something that was not mentioned in last week's in the, in, in the courses because I think when Alvish constructed young uh, structures, he used hyperbolic times and did it in one shot. But uh, what, what one can use is that uh, inducing schemes in general, they can be chained together. So you can do them in multi steps. You don't have to do everything in one shot. And the good thing about this is that you can um, 
divide the tasks into two uh, independent parts. First, you can get rid of the non-uniform behavior near the, the bad region. Then you get a uniformly hyperbolic system, but you've, uh, uh, but, but this, the uniformly hyperbolic system will have these continuities, which will be these boundaries of, of sets that return at, at different times. So, but, but in any case, it's a uniformly hyperbolic system and it should have exponential uh, tail of return times. But then you can chain them together. If the original system had some slower decay uh, rates for the tail of the return times, if you add something exponential to it, then you get the, the, the full return times are, are still comparable to the, to the, to the first uh, return times. Uh, I mean, you can make these estimates uh, easily. So this two-step procedure is, uh, I think, very nice. And uh, I haven't seen it used that often. And well, I mean, it remains to be seen whether it's, uh, yeah. Uh, Stephanie, Excuse me, are... payment. Yeah. So I, I just wanted to mention that this is exactly uh, the approach that uh, uh, Mateus was explaining yesterday that yes. we used to, to do. <laughs> yeah, for, there's for a the reason approach. for that because, uh, well, this comes later, but at the end of this work, we use a, a, a result by um, uh, Bruin, Terhesio, and Melbourne, which is the same uh, that, that you guys use. And uh, what their main theorem requires is the existence of what they call a chernov markarian zhang structure. And that's exactly a two-step inducing procedure, right? So, uh, I mean, this paper that, uh, that I'm talking about, this was published uh, last year. So, so, I mean, we were writing these papers at the same time and Melbourne, uh, the, the theorem of uh, Bruin, Theresia and Melbourne is the common part. So this is why it's used in both uh, both works. Yeah. I also want just just one minute. Steph. I also want to make a further comment that in our example, at the degenerate set where the curvature is zero, we have exactly that the stable and unstable directions coincide. So yeah. it's very similar to. Yeah. Thank you very much. In fact, when Carlos Mateus was thinking uh, was talking about this, I was thinking about exactly the same. I mean, comparing the two. Uh, Two examples, yeah. yeah. Thank you. So, so I, I, I am not actually don't think that I, uh, I'm not sure whether I have understood these two steps, whether I'm familiar or not with these two step procedures. So, just to understand this, this neighborhood O of zero is it a refinement? Is it a, a piece of the refinement of the Markov partition? I mean, is it a so you want it to be. You want to induce on a set away from uh, uh, the fixed point. Uh, you want it also to be some refinement of the Markov partition. Right. Our Markov partition uh, has three elements, and all three of them intersect at the fixed point. So you cannot choose one of those. So you re we refine it forward and backwards, and then you can then you will see exactly this picture. Right. You will okay. see. So I, I've. I've drawn here the original Markov partition, but with straight lines, because uh, it gives me more room to draw other things. In reality, uh, things are tangent here. Uh, what you see here, this diamond shape in the middle, this is a union of four elements of the refinement of the Markov partition. This is exactly the set O. So we, we take the first return time to the part outside of O. This is the first inducing uh, step. It's just the first return map outside of the set, outside of this diamond shaped region. And these the, these pieces, of course, they do go through all before they come back, right? I mean, they uh, it's the first return time, but these pieces they they pass through all on the way to coming to coming back, right? Uh, so you say I, you... I'm not. I'm not sure if I completely. I, I'll say what you're trying to say. I think in a more accurate way. So uh, now I explain to you what O is. Take the pre-image of O. If you take the pre-image of O, you will see this rectangular shape here. These are the set of points that map in one iteration into O. Now take the image of O. You will see this set. 
These are the set of points that map in one iteration outside of O. Now, if you consider, uh, maybe I should write uh, T inverse O minus the set O. O is the union of the, is the, is the diamond shape region. Uh, this, this I denote by Q. This is just this set here. This is divided into sets Rn, where each Rn is the set of points that's, that takes n iterations to get out of O. So you have, uh, a, a, it's exactly shown in the picture, right? Maybe I should zoom. <laughs> yeah, so it goes, this point goes into O, it spends some time here and then goes out. Similar thing happens here. Points from here, they go here, they get out in n iterations, same here, and, and same here. And that's when you stop the inducing, right? I mean, that's the inducing, it's just- This is just the first return, yeah. That's the, the first return is it goes from, basically spends all its time you know, on the way, on the way. I see, I yeah, see. Yeah, points, so it's the complement of this is why, right? Of course, after you get out, uh -huh. then you, you can spend some time outside, but then eventually you go back in here and then you go through O again. Uh -huh. Yes, 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 yes. So this is just the first return map, right? And you don't, you, once uh, you've returned, you only care that this return map is a hyperbolic map. It will be a hyperbolic map, uniformly hyperbolic map, but with discontinuities on, on Y, on the set Y, which is the torus minus O. So this is what you call the first step of the inducing. Yeah. And that's the important part. Is this the tail of this first return time that, you need, that takes most of the work to estimate? Sure, Once sure. you have uh, gotten rid of this part, you're just left with a hyper, uniformly hyperbolic map. Oh, sure, sure, then sure. you still have to do some argument to make a young structure for that one, but you've gotten rid of the non-uniformity. Sure, 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 sure. You've though replaced, if you want to do this in general, you have to understand in general what the discontinuities look like. And this is what we kind of put under the carpet by uh, using a Markov uh, partition to begin with. But uh, I should also mention this, that your system to begin with is a smooth system. So these continuities are kind of an artifact of the method. And the young structures, they're not unique. If you do it somewhere else or in a different way, maybe you can also control these discontinuities in the way that you like. So there's some flexibility there as well. The discontinuities are not forced on you, uh, the, the shape of the discontinuities. Okay. So uh, I, uh, I like this uh, multi-step uh, inducing scheme more than uh, doing everything in one shot. Uh, and uh, so I, I mentioned this as an idea of, of Mercarian, but let me also mention uh, the, the idea of, of Chernoff, which is also useful. If you have a uniformly hyperbolic system, you can do it. It's only enough to do estimates in, in one step. Uh, like this one step expansion condition, which is used in billiards. Uh, it allows you to only consider finitely many steps uh, rather than uh, the full trajectory of points. So maybe uh, this is something related as well. Uh, okay, anyway, let's, let's move on. Um, yeah, so this, is, this was about the first, um, uh, first uh, part of inducing. Uh, let me just say a, a word about the quasi-Hamiltonian. What is the quasi-Hamiltonian? A quasi-Hamiltonian is a function on the, on the, the torus, uh, which you can obtain by just writing this relation and doing some uh, Taylor expansion. Uh, and uh, using this quasi-Hamiltonian, you can control the trajectories up to some error. And by that, I mean exactly this relation that you see here, the, uh, the function h applied to the image of a point uh, uh, is uh, minus uh, the, the function at that point. The, 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 the difference is extremely small. Uh, I mean, this is, this is the control we need, but maybe you can use a more uh, complicated uh, polynomial for the Hamiltonian, and then you can get even a better control if you want. Uh, but this is, this is all that suffices for our needs. 
uh, this ingredient uh, exists in existed also in the paper of Liverani and Martins where where they initiated this this study. Um, we use it uh, here. So that together with uh, the dynamics, I mentioned the dynamics on the stable manifold. Uh, this is again a lemma from Liverani Martins 2005. And basically what it says is that if you're on the stable manifold uh, going to zero, then the X coordinate uh, is like one over N. So these points, they go to zero like one over N. So uh, for, and the, the importance of these two, um, the quasi Hamiltonian and the dynamics on the stable manifold is that uh, we follow the trajectory of points. Um, if you have a point that returns after, uh, has a high return time, like it's in one of these Rn's with a large N, then it's very close to the stable manifold of zero. So there you can apply the dynamics on the stable manifold to control the trajectory. When it gets near the zero, uh, when it gets near uh, zero, you can, uh, Instead, use the, use the quasi-Hamiltonian to control the trajectory. Let me, uh, well, maybe I should again zoom in. So uh, here you use the dynamics on the stable manifold to approximate the trajectory. You go in, uh, but then more closer to the, to the origin, you use the quasi-Hamiltonian to, uh, to approximate the trajectory near zero. There will be another picture which is more sophisticated and there you will see exactly what's, uh, what's happening. Uh, okay. And uh, in our case, uh, we're able to prove that the first return time is, uh, uh, is of order n to the minus five. So the points that uh, get in one step into the region O and spend n iterations there uh, have, have measured n to the minus five. Um, if you do the next inducing scheme, uh, you will get something uh, which is, has exponential tails. Usually when you connect these two uh, uh, return times together, you will get log n terms, log n to some power. But there are ways to, you can uh, possibly get rid of them. In our case, uh, you can. So you get uh, the same estimate. The constant in front will be, of course, different, but uh, the, the rate is, is the same. So uh, uh, yeah, and maybe let me say something about the second uh, inducing scheme. So the second, in, so first we consider the return from, uh, from Y to itself. Y is everything outside of this diamond region. But then to do the further inducing, we restrict ourselves to the set, uh, this set Q. Q is, the, Q is the union of these two sets. So the this would be the base of the tower now. And uh, yeah. And it's on this uh, region that the map will be a uniformly, uh, when you return, it will be a uniformly hyperbolic map with tail of return times n to the minus five. Uh, so you can see exactly what uh, Alvish was talking about in his lectures here. Uh, Q is this set that you start with, with, with a hyperbolic product structure when you start to check the conditions of Young. Of course, there are other conditions, right? But uh, again, here you can check them using the estimates from Liverani Martins in 2005. And also um, uh, you can uh, deal with the discontinuities by the fact that everything is a, is a Markov element. Uh, I mean, you have these Markov partitions. Uh, all, all the pieces are formed by stable and unstable manifolds of, of zero. Okay. So once you have this estimate on the tail of the return times uh, to get the mixing rate, as I mentioned to Yuri, uh, well, we, we both mentioned the same thing. Uh, we used the result of uh, Bruin, Melbourne and uh, Teresio. Uh, 
which requires a Chernoff Markarian Zen structure. As I said, this two-step inducing was, was uh, used for billiards uh, by Markarian, Chernoff, and, and co-authors. So uh, that's where it comes from. Uh, and in this uh, paper of Bruin, Mel Melbourne, Terhesio, it's the first time they call it by this name. And this is their theorem. I just put it here so you can see uh, why, why it's useful to us. Uh, it provides uh, an estimate for the uh, correlations, which is uh, much more precise than, than the usual upper bound. And the crucial uh, thing you need to apply it is the estimate on the tail of the, the return times. Uh, for us, we obtained the tail well, mu for us is, is Lebeg because the symplectic map in two dimension is, is, uh, preserves uh, area. Uh, and uh, the estimate we obtained for this, for phi, uh, phi zero to equal to J, we obtain J to the minus five, right? So if you, you do J, uh, phi zero to greater than J, this is of order J to the minus four, then you sum up, you lose another degree is j to the minus three. And this is why you will get n to the minus three um, uh, decay rate. Uh, so you might ask, uh, what does a Chernoff Markarian Zang structure have to do with this uh, uh, result? Well, in this result, there are objects that depend on this kind of structure, like this space of uh, this space. Uh, the gamma, which I haven't defined uh, here. Uh, so this theorem requires this kind of two-step uh, procedure. So uh, I guess I've explained all the ingredients. It only remains for me to say, how do you obtain this most difficult part of estimating the tail of the return times? Uh, maybe I can say a few words about that. And this is the most sophisticated picture I can, <laughs> I could produce. Um, let me first, so, okay. So this is the big picture in a very small neighborhood near the, the origin. It's a rectangular neighborhood of uh, size uh, of this form. So if I go back to figure three, I can tell you where this is, where this rectangle is. Um, and that rectangle is uh, something uh, here. So the picture you see in the other one is uh, on the other slide is, is a kind of precise um, picture of what you see there. So what is the set O? The set O is this uh, diamond region that has boundary in black, which I just highlighted in purple. That's my set O. Uh, you can see the set Q here. Um, maybe I change color. Uh, Q is here. It's this part and uh, this part. And now the colorful uh, rectangles that you see, these are the, the points that have different uh, return times. So uh, let's go into black. So this one in particular is R2, R3, R4, R5, the same thing here. This is R2, R3, R4, and so on. So they're, 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 they, are, they have four components, right? This is also R2, R2. So for example, for a point in uh, R2, these are the points that get out of O in two steps. So they go here, one and two, get out. For points in three, they go here, here, and there. Uh, if you can see very well, these kind of sets are kind of highlighted here. Ah, maybe. maybe I should draw that. So these are the images of the pieces as you get out. And the points that you see in black and yellow, these are the typical trajectories. So you can see that if you take a point typical trajectory in R4, it goes here, one, two, three, and four, it gets out. The thin lines that you see in the picture, these are the level sets of the Hamiltonian. So there's this energy function 
uh, whose level curves um, approximate the, the path of the trajectories. And this approximation becomes better and better as you approach zero. This is what you see here in all of these, uh, this black trajectory, for example. You can see that it, it very precisely lies on the, the level set of the quasi Hamiltonian. Um, uh, yeah, so our task uh, uh, is to, um, we need to estimate the, the Lebesgue measure of the return times. Um, uh, so these are basically the sets uh, Rn. Uh, and uh, here we use the, um, one of the things we use is the invariance of the Lebesgue measure. It turns out that it's more convenient instead of uh, estimating the measure of this rectangle there, it's more convenient to estimate it geometrically when it's uh, closer to the y-axis uh, that is somewhere here. Well, maybe this one is better. Uh, no, this one, there. And uh, we estimate the, the measure of such a rectangle by the distance between the axes, the trajectory of x. So we know x spans, say, k iterations. So xk and xk minus one, the distance between them, and also the distance between the y coordinates of points. To, in order to do this, you need to be able to... Uh, uh, approximate these, these, these values. We relate them to the, to the quasi-Hamiltonian, so, so to some energy. Then we relate the energy to the time, the time that points spent in the, uh, in the region. And uh, that way we relate the measure of the rectangle to the time. And that's the tail of the return times. Uh, so, Either uh, you stop here, you just look at the picture and you're happy, or you uh, look at the paper and read uh, 12 pages of little lemmas and uh, calculations. They're, they're simple calculations once you know what you're uh, trying to do, but it's a little bit uh, long and involved. But this is what happens when you try to get your hands dirty and uh, take, a, take a specific example. Uh, uh, and the, the more it's related to a physical system, maybe the more complicated it becomes or the more generic it is, the, the more complicated it becomes, but that's, that's life. Um, so that's, I uh, oh, I wanted to, I, there's one thing that is drawn here that I'll explain and then I finish. So here you see two parabolas uh, that are drawn in light blue. Uh, these are the ones here and there. So these parabolas, they, they um, divide the trajectories into two parts. And these are exactly the two parts where outside of the parabola, we use the dynamics on the stable manifold to approximate the trajectory. Once it goes into the parabola, we use the Hamiltonian to uh, estimate the trajectory. And a nice property of this system is that once the trajectory first enters this region, the y coordinate of it is almost constant. So it starts to go, it, it follows the stable manifold. Of course, it cannot follow it forever because then it will end up at zero. It, it needs to get out. But then once it starts to get out, it just goes in a straight line. Uh, that's, uh, and so the Hamiltonian controls this shape of the trajectory. You also have a control on the speed because the speed of the trajectory if you think about its x coordinate is just x n uh, uh, say uh, plus one minus x n and for us if you just look at the formula it's just y n plus h x n which is just y n plus one so it, it's also the, the speed on, at which you approach uh, zero is also related to the to the y coordinate and the, the Hamiltonian and putting all of this information in, you get at the end an estimate on the tail of the return time, which um, is this one right there.
and uh, theorem of Bruin, uh, Melbourne, and Terhesio finishes the, the job. I should mention that the theorem, uh, all of these results on lower bounds, they use the work of uh, Omi Serig and the refinements of it by, uh, by Sebastian Gozel. Okay, I'll finish here. Thank you very much. Thank you, Prima. Thank you. This is really very nice, uh, very nice con construction. Congratulations, and very nice talk. Thank you. Are there any questions uh, or comments for Payman? Uh, Dominic, yes. Yes. Uh, hi. Um, so the uh, how. Uh, the Markov partition that you construct or th th that you use for this um, uh, to, to create the young structure, right? You start with the Markov partition and use that to sort of create the young structure in, in the course of this proof, correct? Yes. So uh, how important is the, um, uh, how important is the conjugacy, uh, how important is the conjugacy between the, um, uh, the almost the Nossov, uh map that you have here and uh, and a linear Anasov diffeomorphism of the torus. We don't use it at all. I mean, this is commonly believed. If oh, you don't. know that, then you know that you have a Markov partition, then you, you, we only use an existence of a Markov partition. Since we don't know that conjugacy exists, we just say, okay, here it is. This sure. is the three element Markov partition that you can use. Uh, right. I see. Yeah. The, re the reason I ask is because there, there, there actually is results in the literature uh, um, uh, about, about a conjugacy between uh, the almost Anasov map and the Anasov mm -hmm. uh, linear map, but for a different differential. The differential in that, uh, it's, 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 it's a, uh, a result of mine from a, a few years ago, but the differential there is, uh, is the identity, not a skew map. So I'm not sure if it would work in the same way, but it's possible that, uh, uh, but, but, it's, but there, it's possible that there, that there might be a uh, uh, this would be very helpful if you uh, mm -hmm. have such a result, because I, I remember seeing some results, but they didn't uh, exactly fit. Uh, we couldn't mm -hmm. exactly apply them. But if you have such a result, I think it would be, I mean, uh, it would Well, be like I said, it's a different class of maps, so I'm not sure if it would, uh, if it would work exactly in the same way as it does here, but, it, but, it's, uh, but, I, can put the, uh, but I can put the archive link in the, in, in the chat, which might be useful if anyone's yeah, interested. Sure. On the other hand, I have the point of view of doing this without the Markov partition. I think this is also possible, but uh, maybe we had to do double the work in order to do it that way. And uh, yeah, we, we would really have to repeat a lot of results that were obtained by other people. Uh, we, we, we would have to redo them ourselves. So uh, we just took the easiest uh, route. That's great, that's great. Thank you very much. So Jerome, you have a question? Yeah, maybe it's naive. So it's about the distinction between uh, the case where the integrable, the average of the observable are fixed, non zero, or they are zero. So, in one, I mean, the TK rate is different. Uh, yes. Can you comment on this? Uh... What can I say? So this is just a general type of results you get for, for lower bounds. When the, I think, uh, I, I don't know, maybe uh, maybe Sari can uh, comment on this pattern. I don't know if this was part of his work and or later on by Sebastian Gozel where he proved this kind of result, but it's- oh, Sebastian, uh, it okay. was Gozel. <laughs> okay, so it was a, it's a result by Sebastian. And since I don't know all the, details, I, I cannot comment why this happens, but this happens uh, in general, that if you could have, when the average is zero, you could have a faster decay rate for those observable. I mean, is it related to the lack of smoothness of the, of something like the, the environment, some environment density or? I don't see the relation, I don't know. Yeah, and another question was this, this quasi Hamiltonian. So you, you said it has some physical origin because it looks like uh, some kind of miracle. <laughs> no, it's not. Uh, having a Hamiltonian flow 
having the dynamics being exactly represented by a flow, that's, that's a miracle, but this is just approximation. Uh, I mean, it comes from the fact that you have, uh, you know, H is C infinity smooth and uh, you just do some Taylor expansion and uh, you obtain this uh, function that uh, approximates the trajectory up to this error, uh, which is, what was it? X to the eighth plus Y to the fourth, most, something like that. So it's not, it's not such a miracle uh, in this sense. It's... Uh, you're not saying that trajectories exactly lie on some Hamiltonian flow, uh, no. So, so, so if you prefer what, what kind of condition? Uh, so here, okay, you have this formula uh, for the map T with the function little h, and this little h uh, satisfies, uh, I mean, basically is uh, bx cubed plus uh, the big O of x5. If you, if you change this, this uh, formula for H, will you still uh, get just another Hamiltonian with similar quasi Hamiltonian with similar properties, or, or is it? Uh, if you uh, change we... H, well, you can change H and still, I, I don't know how you want to change H. Well, my question uh, is how general is, is the fact that, what, what do you need to have a quasi Hamiltonian? I would say just HC infinity. Okay, so just the fact that you have this tangency is- uh, Yeah, and some properties, you just write down the Taylor expansion and uh, see what terms cancel out and what remains. If the, if the bad terms, <laughs> lower terms, they all cancel, then you're happy. Uh, you have a good error term. If they don't, then you're not happy. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I, wait a second. Are you saying, sorry, you, I don't want to jump in, but it's just, no, like it's just connected to this. Jerome, is, is your question uh, about how, whether this whole construction and the results work for perturbations of this? Is this what you're asking? How much you can. Yeah, how much I, yeah. Well, yeah, I have how the much can question. I change the precise? I mean, what are the assumptions that? that you really need. Yeah, I had the same question actually. So can you, you know, can you remove some of the explicit? Uh... Oh, I would say, let's say, let's pick at least the first four. Uh, so this uh, quasi Hamiltonian is obtained in the Liverani Martins 2005. It's some footnote, but I think it's just writing uh, H expanding H composed with T and subtracting uh, H. Uh, so the quasi Hamiltonian is a consequence of these. These are the, these are the assumptions and that's it. Yeah. I see, you don't H, assume. H is just some polynomial that if you apply to uh, T and subtract H, you can cancel the lower order terms. So the actual formal assumptions are just the ones that are on this slide. Yeah, only these five. That's yeah. it. Yes. But 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 what does but the but the uh, tail will depend on something else. It will depend on. So are you saying that this the fact that H is of this form it automatically follows from these assumptions? So you will always get this n to the minus five under these assumptions. Yes, yes. One to five. Yes, yeah. exactly. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, the estimates. Uh, I mean. Yeah, as I said, it's uh, several pages of estimates, but all you need are these uh, these order five terms. Uh, these are this this form of of H is enough for for the whole result. Okay, thank you very much, Yuri. You had a question. Uh, yes. So, do do you need to control bounded distortion inside these R ends? Yes. <laughs> yeah. So distortion is also controlled. Uh, okay. Yeah. So oh, I, I hate I'm to asking... say this, but a lot of these things are uh, at the quantitative estimates are in the paper of uh, Liverani and uh, Martin. So I listed them uh, before. Uh, yeah. And uh, distortions are easily controlled. It's not hard. Okay. Uh, so the first return to Y. Uh, 
isn't it already uniformly hyperbolic because you waited until you passed through the like yes. the yes, bad region? Is. Yes, it is. It has uh, these continuities, but and it's not uh, this full. It doesn't have this full branch. Uh, mm. I mean, okay. So, but perhaps uh, another possible approach to avoid the Markov partition, the existence of the Markov partition, would be to prove Chernov axioms. Yes. Or... If I were to do it without the Markov partition, this is what I would do. Uh, but. Yeah, maybe maybe this is what you guys do uh, with yeah. uh, Matheusen. Yeah, yeah. So. And and then one difficulty is the regularity of the unstable manifolds. So you you said that it is C two outside of the of the neighborhood. Mm, yeah. Perhaps the induced map already will have C two regular infinite manifolds. Mm. But to be on the safe side, uh, if you have like some sort of uniform C one plus Lipschitz. Just like mm -hmm. uh, what we have, mm -hmm. then I believe that uh, you can go directly without using the Markov partitions and get the Young structure. Yeah, I think this would be an interesting uh, thing to do. I mean, take the same examples, uh, um, decrease the regularity, and see if you can do the same things without Markov partition. Uh, yeah. yeah, and then you can perturb outside of the of the neighborhood also in the any way you want, right? Yes. No, I think it would be very nice. I mean, uh, I'm not sure if the effort, uh, uh, it, yeah, <laughs> you might have to put a lot of effort into getting exactly the same results, uh, but I think it's worth it. I, I didn't do it, but yeah. Okay, Roland. Hi, Roland. Nice to see you. Ah, Roland. Hello. Hi. Uh, just, just a very naive, quick question. I think you mentioned um, regularity of the holonomies, maybe on the next slide. And I was just wondering if, if there's anything exotic hidden behind this phrase. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, but it's... Uh, okay, so we need to check the assumptions of Young. And in this, I think in the last uh, condition of Young, she needs absolute continuity of the holonomy plus some formula for the, um, some product formula that you have to check. Uh, but these are, uh, in, in these examples, these are consequences of the general theory. I think if you go back to the book of Manier and look at some theorem and its proof, it's exactly the same. So, okay. uh, I mean, uh, by regularity of the holonomy, I meant that we have this property. In the paper, we comment about it, but we don't uh, do everything from scratch. We just say that by this, this, and this, it follows that you have these two properties uh, of Young uh, to, to obtain a Young structure. Okay, thank you. You are. Okay, Mateus. Um, yes, I have a uh, quick uh, little question. So, um, do you know how your rate of mixing changes when you allow H to be flatter? So the tangency is stronger and uh, oh. they assume that you, you make the first R terms of the Taylor series of H to vanish. So how this influence in the final result on mixing? Hmm. No, we didn't explore that. I would say I, I haven't thought about it. Yeah, because I think it's, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, what do you think? Uh, natural question, especially if you look at the papers by, uh, I mean, the, in the billiard literature by Chernoff and Zhang, uh, where they have a full range of uh, uh, mixing. So they have, they have this formula that, I mean, if, the, if you start with dispersing billiards, but then you make um, one of the obstacles to acquire zero curvature by this profile one plus extra power R, then they have a rate of mixing for the beer map of type R plus two over R minus two. So some, some rational function of the flatness of the mm -hmm. obstacle. And, and it, I think it would be natural here. Okay. Okay, so, thank you. Yeah, that sounds like a very interesting uh, generalization. 
Yeah. yeah. So, so the way this project started was because Colangelo asked me, uh, can you obtain the better rate for this because of this controversy between the numerical results and the, the, <laughs> the result that he obtained himself. So <laughs> I said, okay, yeah, let's do it. And uh, we did it. So it was not, uh, mm -hmm. at the beginning, we were not trying to understand the whole uh, theory surrounding this. It was just... Uh, this, this, is a, this is a battle between mathematical mathematical physicists and physical mathematical <laughs> physicists. Yes, I would say that. <laughs> yeah, I try to act like a physicist there, just like Colangelo. <laughs> Great. Okay. Well, thank you, everybody. Are there any final questions before we I'll go off. Okay, so thank you again to both of the speakers. Really, it's been a fantastic, uh, fantastic session today. Thank you, Jalom. Uh, thank you, Payman. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And um, okay, so everyone get on with their lunches or dinners or night times. And uh, we will see you all again tomorrow. There's the uh, Champions League tonight. Champions League now. Okay, so you can watch the Champions League. <laughs> okay. and, well, uh, do, do your homework first. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we'll see you all tomorrow at the same time. Bye-bye. Okay, Bye -bye. thank you very much. Bye. Bye.